And we have Jan. Fantastic. However, I, shall we call the meeting to order, please? We need the multi-picture. Uh, oh, that's oh, we have instructions. Oh my goodness. Yeah, do that. We just go to. What are you doing? It was working perfectly. I think they're trying to make yeah. both screens. Oh, both of us. Like a, the same size. Do we care if we look at ourselves? I thought well, I no. think other people want to see us. Uh, who? Oh, whoever signs in. Right. And whoever watches it later on. Oh, the oh I see. There we are. Right. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, meeting is called to order. Do we have the approval, please, of the minutes, which were fantastically done by our scribe, Ms. Wheeler? Do we have a motion or do we have any discussion? I'll nope. make a motion to open the meeting. Second. No, no, no. Just you want to approve the minutes? Oh, you could do that oh. too. Yeah, motion to approve. <laughs> I, was I motion. think we can, can't we call it to order without a motion? I think. Yes. What? The chair can call the meeting to order without a motion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So somebody's moved on the minutes. Do we have a second? I second. All those in favor? Aye. Approved. Aye. Okay, our next Can item. Do an aye? All right, we have to do aye, aye, aye. Oh, all right. Patrick? Aye, Patrick. Aye, Mark. Aye, Rennie. Aye, Liz. Aye, Michaela. Aye, Jan. Okay. Aye, Spartacus. All right, Spartacus there. <laughs> all right. Um, our next item of business, uh, Jane Ralph is on vacation. And I did not receive any, I sent the information to June Wolf. I called and left messages twice for June and have had no response. This is to get the letter to agree. To right, to have a discussion with them to discuss the funds that were allocated to us by the CPC. Right. Well, the time I mean, he hasn't voted on those anyway yet, so right. we have more than enough time. Well, those would be well I don't, we, no, we need their permission. We need the permission before the town meeting. We can't do. We can't use that unless they give us permission. As it is, so there's no. If they say no, we have nothing to vote on. Then there's nothing for the town meeting to allocate to us. Right. But there's still plenty of time. But it would be nice right. to hear from them. I. It would be very good to hear from them. So hopefully, Patrick, it's you're setting up a meeting. Hopefully, or not. I was about trying, but you know, she's on vacation, right? Right. Well, she's back on Wednesday. Okay. Okay. Maybe good. that's why. Whoever else is in the office can't really say. That's true. Right. She's right. Not Could around. be. But uh, we have uh, had many discussions with June. Um, so we'll see. But uh, so moving right along. Um, big item of business, uh, Janet, Michaela, would you like to, uh, if anyone needs a copy of Patrick, would you like a copy of this? Okay. Mark, do you have a copy? I think I do. Okay. Michaela has one. I have one hooked up on my computer. Um, actually, I want to see it. <laughs> All right. One second. I guess maybe I have a request. Uh, Is that Jan or Michaela, whoever wants to lead this, uh, do you want to take us through what's happened? Yes, and I'll, I'll start off. Um, as you probably know, we sent out requests for quotations or quotes to three different consulting firms or consultants. Uh, we, I received a... a note back from one of them that their time schedule would not work with Jennifer Goldson to start any time before the middle to the end of June so that she did not intend to submit a proposal. Uh, we never heard from uh, Judy Barrett. So we only received one proposal, uh, which was from Karen Sonnerberg that I think I sent to all of you last week. Uh, it looks very extensive. She was quite clear about what deliverables she would provide and where she would be engaged. She was quite clear also on her experience and she has a lot of experience in doing these kinds of, um, of studies. So, and according to uh, Michael Canales, we, as long as we sent the proposal out to three, we could, and we only get one response, we can proceed to go ahead and approve um, working with Karen Sonnerberg and go forward. So I think one of the things that I'm hoping we can do today is to vote on proceeding with this proposal to do the housing production plan with Karen. This goes directly to what mm -hmm. you want to talk about tomorrow. Yes, sir. 
Was there any sense of how much it will cost? Yes. Yeah, she gives a breakdown in okay, 17. 17. I guess I didn't print this. Right, it, under each oh, task, it has a, uh, Patrick, a cost. Yeah, the total would be 17 to Thank you for giving it yeah. to me. Okay, thanks. I read it. I loved it. I, I thought it was quite a good proposal. I, don't I know agree. Yeah, too. and it seemed reasonable for all yeah. of the things that yeah. are. Well, this is considerably under what we thought it would, the, the cost would be. Isn't that correct, Jim? Yes, it is. I think we were thinking it'd be closer, you know, to at least 10 grand more than that. Okay. This, this is very good. Uh, she certainly has extensive credentials. I was a little over, seems a little overqualified to, to, to do this. Except she loves what she does. Yeah. I mean, she, it's clear that she's yeah. really invested in this. We also were reading that she, you know, she writes and speaks about how she lives in a uh, neighborhood that has similar mm -hmm. issues to the Berkshires, which I think is valuable to have that personal perspective as well. Um, but she doesn't actually live too, no. too far from here. It's, right. it's, it's it's that northern Connecticut. Sharon, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sharon. Yeah, Lake yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I, I know it's a little south of Salisbury. The small villa area with the lake, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, you have to go through it to get to Wasaic. Right. Um, which is, um, and, but it's also, it's it's it has Sharon and Stockbridge have very similar economic and, and social. Like Eastham, you know, in the Cape, which has very similar issues to what we're dealing with here. Yeah. Um, Does anybody have any objections to this? No. So maybe we should have a motion to proceed. Would you like to make one, Mr. I White? A motion to proceed. I'll second that motion. All right. Any further discussion about this? Yeah, we need five out of six votes because with Don not here, mm -hmm. we still need a super majority to take action to spend money. So. But we're six. I understand. I'm just right. We just have to take it. It's not just a simple majority. Five of us have to agree. Okay. Thank you. So, but, um, any further discussion about this? All those in favor? I'm roll call. I'm roll call. I'm Patrick. Hi, Mark. Hi, Rani. Hi, Liz. Hi, Michaela. Dan? Hi. <laughs> that was. Good I think that was an eye, right? Shake your head. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we have right. it. The uh, connection is not is not the best. I'm All right. sorry. Yes. So, just, um, before before we move on, um, one thing I would like to do. So I'll be in touch with uh, Karen and also in touch with Michael about this, and we need to set up a meeting. I'm hoping in the next ten days. Uh, which would be the kickoff meeting for this and signing of the contract and so on. Um, so that meeting would include um, Michael, myself, Michaela, and anyone else who would like to participate in that kickoff meeting. The point of the kickoff meeting would be to discuss the, the whole process, go over what the deliverables are, what is the role each of us would be playing in that process and the timeline for delivery of those. Would it make any sense, Jan, to um, have that meeting coincide with our, be part of our next meeting? Yeah, so that everyone- We can't really have a subcommittee. Right. You know, we can't legally have a subcommittee. It's whatever, you know, great we just got cited for it. So we either make a subcommittee and you two go, but it has to be a public meeting, mm -hmm. or we just make it part of this meeting and, you know. Would, would that, uh, it, it seems like then all of us could. It would save time. It, we, you know, we wouldn't have to have a discussion afterwards. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of having everybody together. Well, and the transparency would be mm -hmm. nice yeah. to just have yeah. people follow along with the process. Is that the April 24th meeting? Right, I, I had put down April 24th for discussion um, as our next meeting. Jen, does that work for you? I think it does. I don't have my calendar right here, but I believe it does. It's and a I'm Monday. A, it's no, a Monday. Yeah. Now, if one of the other of you wants to get together with the vendor and Michael ahead of then, mm -hmm. you can do that. I just wouldn't both go to a meeting. Right. Sure. You know. So if you feel like you want to kind of, you know, just between you, you could easily set a meeting up with Michael and just go over the details so you could be ready. Okay. Or just, or just say we're creating a subcommittee and the two of you go and you do it on Zoom. Either way. Okay. Uh, all right. So I, I think what I'll try to do is maybe have that preliminary meeting with Michael because he would need to be in on this first uh, larger discussion because right. the town in the administration in the town is going to have to provide some document to Karen. And so either Michael or his staff would, would need to be providing those. 
So, All right. So I'll try to set that up with Michael. Do you both want to go? It's easy to create a subcommittee. <laughs> we can just vote a subcommittee right now, and it could be the two of you. I mean, Jen, if that's helpful, I can do that with you. Okay. That, yeah. That's fine. Just make sure you schedule it two days in advance yep. and you know, put it on the camera. Okay. Great. Okay. All right, so we need but doesn't it have to be post? Wait, wait hold yes, on. If if they have a, are we? Are you suggesting we have a subcommittee and they take care of it and, and they post yes. it on agenda? Yeah. Right, but are you'll have to post your own agenda, at least yes. forty eight hours, okay. and then have a meeting. Um, Someone's got to take notes and then yep. write them up. I can do that. Um, <laughs> I can do that. I can be Liz. <laughs> no one can be Liz. Well, I can try. You can be Liz. <laughs> Create a subcommittee okay. for the housing production plan. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? I, Patrick. I, Mark. I, Rani. I, Liz. I, Michaela. I, Jan. Great. All right. All right. Now, we just, I suggest, though, in our, after you have the kickoff meeting, Will we ask Karen to come to our next meeting and um, talk to us? Uh, then yes. at that point, we all would be, we could, you, in order to preserve your meeting, two people can meet as long as they don't make any decisions. Can't I, they? I think that, I think during the season, tis the season and we should do everything by the book and uh, housing is something that's got a lot of uh, interest lately in discussion and we should do it in public and the two of them should meet in public. So oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm suggesting. They're going to meet in public and they can do all that. And if they want to, you can make any decisions, I guess you want to. But we should invite her to our next meeting so that all of us. Yeah, we'll put it on the agenda. Sure. Well, we'll put it on the meeting on the agenda. However, I just learned that Mark can't come on the 24th. Oh, no. So. There, there are going to be times when people show up. Well, I'll be in France for two weeks, just, so. Oh, it's hard. We won't have it. <laughs> you know, we won't have it. Do you go to France? What are the privileges of being older? Excellent. Yeah. Um, Will you be no, wait, joined by Zoom? Slip in. <laughs> so we have a quorum? <laughs> All right. Um, what do we need for a quorum? Well, we need if five. We're gonna, if we're gonna make any decisions about spending money. We have to have five. Otherwise, the quorum's four. Okay. I'm out. Everybody would have to vote yes. Probably would anyway. Yeah. Well, what are we spending any money on? Um, not that, not that I know. Yeah, of. We are. We'll have five. But mm -hmm. so, we can do a different day. When are you leaving? When are you coming back? I'm leaving. I think the 19th till like May 2nd. Or um, not till September. Something. Not till something. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, You're in Provence. <laughs> See you guys. Can you look on your calendar? Just <coughs> uh, what? What if it were um, the the previous Thursday, which would be the no? He's probably gone. It's next week. It would be the thirteenth. Thirteenth. No, that's next week. He's leaving Not the nineteenth. So. He's leaving the nineteenth. Okay, so that's it would either have to be the Monday or the. Tuesday. Ahead. He's not coming. All right. So and we got to have it without. So that's not going to happen. <laughs> what? Right. You, we can't meet on Tuesdays anyway. No. Okay. Um, all right. We'll we'll meet without you. I th um, and I'm not sure how we will be able to proceed. You'll bear up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, hold on. Uh, all right. Just don't crowd. So um, I, I guess the thing is, carry on. Great. Okay. All right. Good. Um, so we will have the next meeting on the 24th. Mm -hmm. And then what about May 15th? Does that work? And when is it, when is it um, town meeting? May 15th is town meeting that will not absolutely, will absolutely not work. It's on a Monday night. It's on a Monday night, yes. Is it? Yep. Okay. All right. So that's a very bad date. <laughs> um, <laughs> will you be back? No, you're not back. May second or something. For, like that. Forever, yeah. right? No, <laughs> okay. What about the next, uh, the twenty second of what? Of May. Oh my God! I have a wedding. Well, or the pre how about the previous Thursday? Jen, oh, you don't have a calendar, Jen. But uh, I have more flexibility in May, so. Do you? Okay. But, and what it's about 20, your twenty second? Is good for what? me. Twenty second is good. Then after that, I'm twenty second of yeah. of May. What about yeah. the previous week? Because it'll be a month in. Um, I don't. I may not be able to show up. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Yes. All right. So when can you come? 22nd? 22nd. May, Michaela? Yep. Okay. Mark? Yeah, 20 seconds. Good. Mr. White? Well, I'll come if I'm still on this board. <laughs> oh, when do you get elected again? Well, I'm saying May 16th is election. So. May 16th. Yeah, and I, I feel strongly that the boards I'm on need select board representation. Mm -hmm. so, you know, if I'm still on the select board, great. If not, you know, Carry I'm from the sidelines. Mm -hmm. well, That's not an issue right now. No. So. <laughs> so I'm not checking my calendar. Nick, it looks <laughs> like... Um, Thank you all for the, so just to re, we're going to meet on the 24th of April and we're going to meet on the 22nd of May right now, unless there's some emergency or something that comes up in the meantime. Um, Nick. Yes. You are in charge of the next section of this meeting for as long as you would like. Is that right? Because I was informed I had 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Who told me you had to? That was the private. Wait a minute. Wait a, wait a minute. Declaration. Hold on. This wait a minute. No, no, Nick. We skipped I, an item. No, we've skipped Mark. So forgive no, me. I'll make it brief. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I'm reporting on the meeting we had on March 16th. <clears throat> we had uh, 18 participants. Each of the other four affordable housing trusts were represented by at least one person. And uh, we had several experts there. I sent out to your uh, uh, official town mailboxes a, a, a roster of the participants with their names, titles, and emails. So you'll, you have a record of that if you want to contact or reach out to any of these folks, um, <coughs> towns or from uh, the experts that we had from Construct, uh, Community Development Corporation of South Berkshire, Berkshire Housing, and uh, you know, we had one other uh, um, housing partner, Mass Housing Partnership. Right. That's Eileen. And um, I mean, a, a few, just a few key points. There were there were some. Uh, Eileen is Berkshire Housing. Mass Housing Partnership. Mass Housing Partnership. Yeah, that's the group in from Boston awesome. area that helps with. Well, that was, but but uh, Berkshire Housing. We is Eileen. Yeah, we had Berkshire We had housing. two people from Berkshire Housing. Yeah, now. Matt Krupke. Yep. And and then we had the Mass Housing Partnership mm -hmm. as well with Shelley. Zoom. Um, a few things came through as, as kind of themes. Um, uh, one of them was that most, I think all of the trusts said that community preservation funds were their principal source of funding. Um, so their towns are make these decisions about how much to put into the pot. And, and there was some discussion of kind of waiting for a couple of years to get a, a, enough money to be able to do something. Um, it was suggested to have developers or builders come in and speak to the trust, have some relationships with people that we can call on when we want information about developing housing and we're looking for costs and, and ideas. And it was suggested that we look for partners such as Habitat uh, for Humanity, um, Central Berkshires. Uh, there's a Northern Berkshires and a Central Berkshires. And uh, so we may want to have Habitat in sometime to one of our meetings as well. Definitely. The, 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 the lady from Habitat couldn't make if she got stuck out of town and uh, had, to, had to cancel her appearance. But uh, the towns uh, had different things, so doing such things as... Uh, uh, Williamstown purchasing three building lots and contracting with Northern Berkshire Habitat to build uh, affordable houses. They have a mortgage assistance program. They're working on property tax relief for qualifying seniors up there. Great Barrington has a down payment assistance program. They're pushing for ADUs. Mm -hmm. They're developing 30 units of housing on North Plain Road with the city doing infrastructure such as roads, water, sewer, and Habitat is the developer yeah. doing the construction. It's pretty ambitious. Lennox has a first-time home buyer program with grants of like ten thousand dollars to help first-time buyers. They have fifty thousand available for that. People can apply for it. So there are a lot of things, big and small, um, that are going on. And uh, so, if there's any any of these things that people have successfully done in other towns, and we want to get forms or language, or I know you've been copying some yeah. proposals and helping you to develop things for the town. 
we could, for example, if there's a if there's a first time home buyer assistance program, we could see what's been done and what the documentation was and what the requirements were from people that have already done it. And that could be. Michaela, helpful. you've started that process. Do you have the documents from the other towns? In terms of the mortgage? Yeah. Um, I think I have something from, I have contacts and I think I have something from the woman I spoke to at Lee Bank who I dealt with uh, in terms of Great Barrington that I can. Yeah. Well, this, this uh, listing I gave out, you know, you could send out an all points bulletin to the to the other four trusts and just say, if any of you done? And Williamstown is the most successful one that I know of. Mm -hmm. But you know, the challenge is just going to be that um, even with down payment assistance, people have to be. That's It's tricky. They, they, yeah. There's not enough income in the family yeah. to afford prices that are around here. But that's the same way that's in places like Lennoxville, they've been able to successfully do it because the prices are low enough. Yeah. In yeah. Great Barrington, they've had down payment assistance that hasn't been many takers just the properties are too expensive yeah and we yeah. probably will run into that here well, i think putting in place because that was such a big part of yeah. why we launched this that we, i think we should put it in place anyway because yeah, well, you might find someone I mean, yeah you never know right. um and i'll also say that on grove street in great barrington they've, there's a current renovation that's a habitat house and i had a chance to go and pound some nails two saturdays ago it's really fun there's basically a volunteer day every saturday oh, so if anybody kind of wants to get a feel for this is a situation where there was a hoarder who left uh well, left left the planet and uh, and they ended up uh, basically the town ended up with possession of the of the the home it was in terrible shape but habitat came in they're turning it into a house and oh, nice. a park and it's going to be a great place That's for uh, for you know, a, a family raise their kids. So yeah. it's really kind of an awesome experience to actually yeah. being part of Habitat. Nice. Yeah, I've done some of that too when yeah. you're in the Boston area. I, I, I did it also. Yeah. And it is it's fun. It's particularly fun if you bring, you know, some friends. Yeah. And, um, and usually it lasts like ten to two or something. Yeah, it was six hours, five hours. Yeah. And they give you lunch. Good nice. lunch. Um, I would just add that um, that at some point it would be good to have be able to have a discussion about what other smaller things we might be able to do besides, I mean, so much of our focus is gonna be on Pinewoods and and how all that, it's a, it's a big deal. It's gonna dominate us for some time, but you know, while that's going on, if we wanna think about any other little smaller things that we could do, get a house and do something with it, mm -hmm. um, you know, so that we can make some progress mm -hmm. uh, in another area, that would be good. So I think we got some ideas for some possibilities out of this meeting and certainly people that can give us some guidance um, as but we go forward, we um, just to re it, well, everybody was there. Uh, everybody, all everybody at this meeting was at, mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. the meeting. We were the best attendant group. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it was really great meeting. Though. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah. Was yeah. Great. Mark did an outstanding. I think really. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yay. Yay I got to say the the Ranny catering service was also. <laughs> You know, right. Well, excellent. we need some approval for the uh, catering. The catering service incurred two hundred and thirty dollars and fifty two cents. Mm -hmm. Not bad for 18 people. It fed so. 18 people breakfast and lunch at a <laughs> at a very reasonable standard. Um, anyway, uh, we do need a motion to approve uh, reimbursement for that. How much was that was it? fun. Two hundred and thirty dollars and fifty two cents. No, we can spend our money. No, well, we can't spend CPC money. We can't spend CPC money. I'll donate a hundred. Well, you don't need to do that. <laughs> no, no, she and, I, need to do she that. and I each put in a little over a hundred. So, uh, if, if I'm sure we can. It was CPC money. There's pretty strict rules on how we spend it. Actually, right. Well, yeah. I'll check on that. Okay. But yeah. if if yeah. if it's allowed, nutritional we'll... preservation probably doesn't come under. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's covered. Uh, we'll, we'll, but I'm happy to we'll donate. Yeah. We get shot down. We knew we were taking a risk. That's right. Um, anyway, it, it, it was, uh, thanks to Mark, a really well thought out, well organized, well. And there's a lot of very smart people working on housing in the Berkshires. A lot of women who are in positions of authority making it happen in, in the Berkshires. It was kind of interesting it is true. a couple of men to see that. Yeah, yeah but it, there's a lot of women yeah. in housing right. apparently. And uh, it was the, kind of Actually, if you, if you think about the, the quote experts. <laughs> Mikhail's rolling her eyes. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I mean, it shouldn't even be mentioned. No, you're right. No, I mean, I, from my generation, at least, when I see progress over That's the way right. it was when I was 25 right. they or 30, we were born. I'm happy to see it. That's and right. I, I want to call it out. Cause, Good for you. And, and, and maybe <laughs> you're at a stage That's where it's like, well, I'm just saying, you're probably at a stage where it's like old news. But 
you know, I, the people in my generation knocked down a lot of these barriers. Yeah, it's awesome. And, and um, to see at this stage of my life real progress on a lot of those kind of fronts is just great. It's just yeah. nice to see that's awesome. It was as it foolish was, as it may seem to, to very nice. There was there was one nice, very nice young man who works for Eileen at Berkshire Housing. Mm. Matt was there. Yeah, Matt was Matt there. That's and good, he's good. All right. But I would just add to your comment about small things. I think we also and it was clear that certainly Great Barrington um, was the most active and oh, and Lennox. And certainly Williamstown has done three good size, very good size projects. And they have another good size project right now underway that putting the pieces together to be able to do, and I'm talking about 50 or 60 units. What's is, that stack you call it? Yeah, the capital stack. Capital stack. Put the capital <laughs> a great stack. great name for a rock group, yeah. capital stack. Capital stack. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Um, I would also like to say that um, we should keep our eyes and ears open for anything. And Liz, you're the most active in that. There's property across from um, Pine Woods that's for sale now, 28 acres, but half of it's wetlands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is it even buildable? I would bet some of it is. Okay. What's the price? I think it's 275. I'm not sure. Don't quote me. Don't quote me. Okay. Right. We'll look at it. Interesting. Uh, but if, if anything comes across, yeah. everybody, I know, Michaela, you're always looking I at know. property. It's just um, a fun habit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Patrick hears things that, from, from time to time. Yeah. So There's a nice lot up at the top of Mackinac Heights I heard about. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, again, many, many thanks to you, Mark. You put a lot well, of effort in there. Mark. Um, you're all welcome. So the tongue in cheek, by the way. <laughs> yes. All right. It's. Uh, I think that covers everything. Um, dates for next meeting, and so Nick. Now I am actually going to turn the meeting over. Thank you. To you. Should I get closer to that or bring it over? It'd be nicer. Why don't no, you? Dan, can you hear? Go pick it up. Good. Okay. So I'm here for two reasons. Um, I bring up the annual meeting multiple times about a walkway that I think Stockbridge made a commitment to. Mm -hmm. Got lots of documents in terms of what we should have done. We haven't done it yet. If I don't hear any more, I'll bring it up to the annual meeting again. Mm -hmm. This is from Pine Woods to, to town. The walkway. And it's actually been engineered has been committed, yep. except we never had a dollar figure. We did vote to raise an appropriate money to put a walkway in on the west side of the road on 102, which is a very dangerous intersection. Mm -hmm. I think I've mentioned before, I'm a truck driver. I'm very worried when I go around the corner. I've, I've submitted photos before of the walkway uh, location mm -hmm. with the snow banks in place where no one could walk. And, you know, I'm willing to leave my file here. It's extensive. I don't want to talk a lot about that. Um, but I do want to bring it up that at the annual meeting, if I don't hear anything about the walkway, I'm going to bring it up again. Well, Patrick, you're, uh, Patrick, you should update everyone. I mean, look, I think we, uh, I think that, uh, uh, We, a couple of things. One, uh, we have a meeting coming up with some church street folks you should come to. It's going to be next week or the week after. They've asked us to put on the agenda of the walkway, so we're going to talk about it a little bit there. Right. Um, the thought was with the significant um, amount of fundraising we're going to need to do, either through town funds or through state, federal <coughs> funds, to sort of figure out the Pinewoods thing that it would make sense to try to roll this project as part of the refinancing of Pinewoods. And we don't have to do it that way. You know, we could just spend the 500,000 or a million that, that we would need to raise an appropriate, which by the way, we only raise an appropriate money to study the walkway, not to actually engineer it or. Copy my file. You'll see the wording from the meeting. And it wasn't to study. It was to do the walkway. How far back is that here? Pardon me? How far back was that? Oh, I don't know. Don't go rummaging. I just thought you might know. What was it built in 2006? It's before that. I went to the dedication ceremony. I can still see before that McMenemy. Before Pinewoods was built? We made a commitment to do three things for the affordable housing people. First of all, it was going to have access to the post office. Mm -hmm. All right. It was going to be on a public transportation way, which it is both of those things. And we were going to make it so it was accessible by walking to town. 
we did two of the three things. Right. We never made it accessible. And it was not, I disagree with you, though I like the intent of what you're saying. Uh, we committed to do the walkway. And I've got documents here to show that. I don't want to spend a lot of time on that because I do want to go to the next phase. But I want you to know the reason I'm involved here is I just don't feel that we've done our job. You know, I've been a resident since 75 when I bought a house. Put it on the 13th agenda of the select board. Is that what I should do? Talk yeah. to Michael? You call me. I'm, I do the agenda. We'll do that. We'll put it on the 13th. And right. I think the next step is we figure out, uh, put some money. It's a two-step thing. We've got to, one, get an update on the cost. And then two, we got to bring the cost to town. Exactly. So we can at least basically fund the 50, 100 grand for engineering. But it'll take too much time to go over my folder now, but I'd like to submit that to Michael or somebody just yeah. to have the sequence of what I've tried to do for a long yeah. time. All right. So Dick, just to clarify, yes. you were active in the original decision to build pine woods. That I was at the meetings to vote to do this. I wasn't active as construct or anything else. I just say I was there when Deb McMinnie did, did the uh, the uh, ceremony and she's standing in skunk cabbage in a swamp. And that's another part of the discussion as to, you know, how we do this and how we plan to do it again. But more to what I want to talk about today okay, is go ahead. I'm available for a brainstorming session, meaning I'd like people to meet together with positive ideas and no one does any character assassination or saying you're wrong or we can't do that or something like that. I think this is a great group. In fact, you're addressing this and I would be willing to be a part of planning for the next phase. That's nothing to do with this annual meeting and that's quite a ways down. I know there's discussion about, you know, whether the Pine Woods is still viable or not, whether they want to have a different location for more affordable housing. So if I can continue a little bit more, I want to go to you my have the floor. phase two. Okay, so years ago, I was on the ad hoc growth study committee with Terry Flynn, a former selectman. We're good friends. We, we developed a whole overlay map system with mylars that would show the different topographies, the different zoning, the different things like that. That was actually before the four acre zoning came into place. And it was very easy for the planning board, the conservation commission, and everybody to kind of look at things. I don't have those maps available. Berkshire Regional Planning Commission helped me develop those. I had them printed up, no idea where they went. No one seems to know. We have, uh, Ned Baldwin provided me with these and I got them plasticized. I got a magic marker. My goal would be at some point to develop a program that would say, all right, we have these pieces of land that we could do something with, all right? Uh, right now we have our paper roads there are lots that were designated as um, places to build that really haven't been developed. Ed Baldwin struggles with that. He'd like to see more of that accepted. I mean, Liz is in the real estate business, so she's know what I'm talking about. It'd be nice to have something else at Mackinac Heights because there is room for more of that type of thing. She's shaking her head. Thank you. Um, By the way, Michaela lives. Mm -hmm. in, Mac in the Heights. Mm -hmm. Great, fun place. I have customers up there. I, yeah. I, when I can get up the road, I get there. I mean, you can get <laughs> <laughs> Private road, you know. Town road. Yeah. Is it down road now? It's more about getting down the road. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but the reason I brought the maps is I've talked to my IT guy, Jim Toner, does all my computer work. Brilliant guy. We uh, have breakfast every Monday morning at Dottie's up in Pittsfield, mm -hmm. and we go over the iPhone and different things like that. And I was telling him about my problem because I, I wanted to say I've got 10 minutes. I'm going to talk really fast tonight, but thank you for a little bit of leeway. Um, does anyone know what LIDAR is? Mm -hmm. So LIDAR, if you don't know, is basically laser radar that flies over and gets the topographical characteristics of a place. For instance, down in, in Brazil, they're finding Inca ruins of uh, because they can look through the trees, all right? <coughs> we have to have that type of map. I'd love to see some funding for something like that that would help us more find places that would allow for, for instance, accessory uses, which now I approve of. The selectmen are able to say, yes, we have this large house. We have a small place, for instance, right next to mine. They're going to have an accessory use building, which will be a living quarter. I'm very in favor of that. Mm -hmm. Years ago, we had very large houses. We had large families. The houses had servants' quarters, you know. Basically, Prospect Hill was built during the Gilded Age by very wealthy people. 
and they needed help, like we need help, I need help as an employer. Um, and so they built what is referred to as Church Street now. But years ago, do you know what the name of it was? Poverty Row. That's correct. Oh Why did they build Poverty Row? For those people to climb up the hill and service the very wealthy people. I'm in favor of that. So we have had a plan in place for years to take care of the needs of the community by offering places for um, work people. So who built those houses on Church Street? All the wealthy people in Prospect Hill. And they own them. Yeah. I don't know that condition, you know. Mm. My house on the corner of Pine and Shamrock was uh, the gardener for the Sedgwick's, all right? Got a historical designation when I wanted to uh, do a, uh, improvement. It took me about six months extra because I had to go through with the, what's that group called? <laughs> Historic preservation people, whatever it was. And um, that's fine. I, I, I'm not against that, but I think all along we've had ways of handling the affordable housing thing. So now I'd like to help, if I could, in a very productive way, get together with somebody in a group, whether it's a separate committee or not, it doesn't matter to me. But I think with the right maps, we could kind of pinpoint where there might be areas. Now, I'm gonna go out on a limb on this one, all right? The very valuable parts of Stockbridge are waterfront. Is that right, Liz? Yeah. You okay. Yeah. Or just places with views. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna preface that with, we are planning to do some dredging on Stockbridge Bowl. Is that right? Well, if it's approved. Okay. We're planning to do some dredging on Stockbridge Bowl, we are. which is a needed thing because the milfoil has just grown in to the point where we're harvesting that right now. So if, in fact, we do a dredge, I think it's a good idea. And if it works, I think it's a good idea. And if I would have my way, we would take some of the extra funds. I watched the finance committee's meeting, and we have somewhere between a million and a half and four million dollars of surplus funds. Thirteen. Anyhow, 13 million. Well, in all of our yeah. crossover counts, it's about 13. Selectman and the Finance Committee have done a wonderful job. Stockbridge is more than solvent. Okay. Yes. I'm not saying we need to do something with our money, but I think there could be some funds to maybe even buy our own dredge. Now, why am I talking about that? Okay. If, in fact, we had a dredging machine, we'd also have the process of taking that muck out and processing somewhere. Very valuable, by the way. I lived in York Harbor, Maine uh, in the early 70s, and the Army Corps engineers dredged the harbor. And that harbor dredging was put into a pipe, went up the river, and filled in the golf course in York Harbor. So there's a process to take um, whatever they find in the bottom of the lake, all the muck, process it, and send it somewhere. If, in fact, that was successful in the Stockbridge Bowl, you can look on the maps and see how many other wetland areas we have. You want to fill in the wetlands? No. Oh, good. No. <laughs> I'm going to create more of the valuable properties that have made Stockbridge very desirable. Yeah. Have more waterfront. Now, it might sound crazy, but to me, we're setting a precedent. If we dredge the bowl, you know, we've done an improvement for the people that own on the waterfront. Why are we limiting our dredging then to one of our bodies of water. I know Lake Agawam now is going to probably be purchased by either the town of Stockbridge or somebody else. You know what it is, Route 7? Oh, uh, yeah, the Swan property. Right, the Swan We're property. We're not buying it, but somebody will probably. Well, anyhow, it seems to me that, and Clark Pond, and off Ice Glen, there are bodies of water that now have been totally silted in, mm -hmm. okay? It's just uh, what happens, eutrophication, you know? If, in fact, we're going to commit to a dredge in Stockbridge Bowl, what limits us to taking that same dredge process and moving it towards some other bodies of water, creating a higher tax base, and then possible some locations for affordability? For instance, Route 7, which I don't really realize that I think Route 7 had sunk. Mm -hmm. Okay, we had water flowing across recently, yeah. never saw that before. Right. So I think at some point the state is going to have to do something because it can't just be a culvert because the water level is the same on both sides. So I think that should be elevated. In the process of elevating that, there'll be some access roads. And most of the time when you see a highway, you do see some additional access. We don't have it there, 
but that would be a good example. If we could dredge that area, create an access road, we'd create four maze and possibly have some place to put nicer houses, but maybe mixed use, maybe different things. Yes, sir. I have a question, Nick. It, 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 I, I don't know much about the law around wetlands and stuff like that, but I know a lot of conservationists kind of freak out when you talk about moving any frogs or anything around. Yeah. And, and again, and, please don't get it out of the uh, brainstorming session here. Right? <laughs> if, if it's a lot of negative, I don't want to be a negative. I'm just this, be there because I'm going to go like it's the, the door. It's the first thing. It's the first thing that came to mind. Also, what does a dredger cost? Do you have an idea what it is? No idea, but I'll find one for you. A really good salesman. I'll, I'll bet. <laughs> I, I'll probably own one before I leave the room. I'm afraid. I, <laughs> that would operate. It'd be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Can you make me a swimming pool? No. Yeah. I think we can have more swimming shores, you know. Now, I know it's far reaching, it's nothing's going to happen at this meeting, but I think this is at the level of planning. Maybe it's five, 10, 20 year planning. <clears throat> Again, I think a precedent's going to be set that we're allowing um, dredging to happen in a body of water that Stockbridge or Massachusetts. It's a great pond. I think Massachusetts actually owns it. State owns it. Okay. I don't know about Lake Agawam. I don't know about Clark Pond and all these places, but these were places that were swimmable. There was a little uh, summer activity area on Agawam one time. There were still signs up there. It was like a beach. Wow. And we we kind of let that go in a sense. It's, I don't know what who was in charge back in the time. There was no Could you tell me where that is? Because uh... It's over by Mighty Mountain. So if you're driving up Route 7, it's the body of water that is at the base of Mighty Mountain. Yeah. If you're going south on 7, it's almost at the town line with GB, and it's right. on the right. If you look up on the mountains, a big scar. There was a right. big slide. What's that all about? I don't know. I want to hike up there. Is that cool? Anyway, there is a little sign for Lake Agawam if you look carefully. Yes. And going south, this is on your okay. right, and you'll see a sign there, and it doesn't look like a lake. It maybe right. was. It also has, it also has uh, a whole bunch of. It is a one of only two calcareous fens in the state of Massachusetts. Calcareous. Calcareous fens are basically fens that have a calcium base underneath them. There's only two in Massachusetts. One is Campusa bog, the other is Lake Agawam. Because of that, there are incredibly rare species there uh, all around the wetlands surrounding that. That's why the state is coming in to literally burn off the Phragmites because there's seed beds underneath there that will come back to life if you get rid of the invasives. There's an entire management plan for that area. And 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 everything you're saying is very interesting. So, uh, I will just point out, though, that... Uh, that the bold dredging project has, we've been trying to get it permitted for 15 years and it still isn't permitted. Uh, so this is, when you're talking about it be a long-term planning, it, there better be a long-term time frame. I'm just saying, I think we're yeah. setting a precedent when we do it. I yeah. think it's going to get done. There's a lot of uh, political will to yeah. get rid of the milfoil. And the only way you get rid of that is dig down below where the sunlight penetrates mm -hmm. and then it won't grow up again. Yeah. Uh, see, um, seaweed like that only anchors itself. All right. There's no roots to it at all gets us nutrients out of the lake. Mm -hmm. Of course, we've been putting nutrients in the lake for years. We've done some sewering. We've not completed the process, which was designed years ago by Berkshire Regional Planning Commission. All the lakes in this area were going to be sewered completely. And we haven't finished. And we had money, 90% funding to do this years ago. And we decided not to because we were worried about development. Well, development's here. <laughs> People are buying houses now as commodities. That's why People don't have the affordability situation. You know, they're buying commodity houses. They're fixing them up, rightly so. They're creating a new hotel industry called Airbnb. Yep. People aren't living here, but it's taken away the housing that would normally be there for a workman. And that's my sentiment, and that's the only reason I'm speaking today, is to try to find a way to offer an affordable solution. It starts with the land, you know, with the LIDAR, we could find places that are appropriate for small houses. I don't know how small you want to go. This is a FEMA trailer, all right? Not my favorite, but the houses around here, my house included, they were built like boats. The Dutch came up the Hudson River. When the boats got eaten up by the bugs, they took the timbers and they moved them inland. I think probably as far as here, because my house is built with tongue and groove and, and you know, different ways of constructing. It's more like shipbuilding than it is like house building. We have a lot of techniques to build houses today. Our codes, to me, are archaic. 
I have a lot of licenses, construction supervisor, home improvement, master gas fitter, master pipe fitter, sheet metal worker, real estate broker. I have, I've got continuing education, all my licenses, and I follow the trends, all right? Want to be the building inspector? Yeah, right? I don't. I love Ned. I already hear he's going. I know. Ned's great. People, Is Nick retired? Yeah. People complain about Ned. I don't. And I go, I'm a taxpayer. He's doing his job. What's the problem? Mm -hmm. That's great. And it's hard for him to be as fair as he is because the codes have gotten so difficult. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, when I first bought my house, I got everything in Grossman's, which was a lumber place. I needed to wire it. So I bought a book, 97 cents, wiring simplified, sat down for two hours, did it, wired my house. <clears throat> Can't do that today on electrical mm -hmm. license, you know, but it's not that difficult. If you know anything about electricity, there's only two things. There's serious and parallel wiring. Mm -hmm. Everything else is just, you know, Codes pile on top of that, you know. Um, and that's a major part of the affordability issue because yeah. if you're a young couple yes. or whoever coming here, you have to you have to pay thousands of dollars in fees and permits and sometimes lawyers' fees to just start the process of either renovating or building, exactly. which is really a hindrance to even people who can afford it. You know, you're still you're talking about an additional seven, ten, fifteen thousand dollars before you can even begin. And so my question now is do we need the codes the way they're built? All right. When I go to bed at night, I turn the camera on or excuse my flashlight on, I walk into bed, I plug my phone in, I don't even turn the overhead light in. Mm -hmm. When we wire a house today, you have to have a six foot cord reach anywhere in the room. All right. We have LED lights. We have, um, you know, what are they called? The clap. We have ways of starting things without all the infrastructure. We don't need phone lines in the walls. We don't need cable in the walls. Everything's on modem today. I think we have to look over a long period, a way to build a house that's affordable. Now, a little bit on, on your point, if you don't mind. So the terms affordable housing, to me, what would make it affordable? First of all, somebody's gonna have a mortgage. I don't care who pays for it, all right? Then I'm gonna have utility expenses, taxes, and food. So if you built the house properly, I'm not saying this one, but something that would have solar panels on it, you might be able to plug your electric car in, all right? You're saving a lot of utility gas there. If it was south facing and built properly with enough exposure to the sun, we could grow our own food. So if you could cut back the expense of the mortgage, cut back the expense of utilities, cut back the expense of food, cut back the expense of taxes, you could do an affordable house. Hello. We can't do it the way you're doing it today. Our formulas don't allow for affordability. We're just, we're keeping people from being able to get over that hurdle. You know, I was able to get over. I came here with a Volkswagen bug, all right? 1970, I graduated from college, I have a bachelor's degree in psychology, all right? Qualifies me for nothing. Hey, <laughs> I worked a lot. Worked at Mount Snow. Worked at York Harbor, Maine, waiting tables, doing construction. Had enough money in three years to buy a house in Stockbridge. I still have the same house, right? But it was talk about sweat equity. Dave Vincent, who taught me my thing, he lived on the edge of the dump, and then we go and pick the dump, the the um, Berkshire Playhouse would have all kinds of really great two by fours with paint on them. I'd take the nails out and put a wall up and, you know, I'd scrounge a lot of stuff. All right. I'm really good at repurposing. And that's how I did my first house over, you know, first house cost me 220, no, $212 a month for the mortgage. All right. Had a tenant in the back. I raised the rent to 125. Now I'm short about $112. I rented the second apartment for 600. The front of her a thousand and even put up a garage running that for 300 all of a sudden I'm making so much money that uh, i had to leave get another house that you could do that in those days and it was affordable now understand though the interest rates were higher everything i bought including my business was at nine and a half percent fixed i still got through it i still paid in fact when i finished buying my business the widow of the person i bought it from says nick you don't owe us any more money in fact, you paid too much. I said, keep it. I just kept putting my head down, going towards the goal line and do it. I don't see someone being able to have that, even with a lot of initiative. It's just difficult to have a local tradesman come in, learn what they need to do, you know, get the experience and get on, on a path that would get them to an affordable house because we don't have the locations to do that. I think back to the LIDAR. We need to kind of identify this. 
So my IT guy said he could probably write a program. You know, we could go into what the zoning is, four, two, one, central. I believe those are the categories. And um, business. Is this something a drone carries uh, LIDAR? It could easily be done by a drone, you know, but it's LIDAR. And I don't think we have that map rendering yet, all right? It seems to me be invaluable to be able to pinpoint places where we could do uh, freestanding houses, form A's, or accessory use houses, which are now we're permitting, which I think is great. I, I commend you highly in allowing for that. By the way, yeah. who knows? <laughs> I mean, is it is it has it passed the selectmen or? No, we have. A, it's we're going to talk about it on the thirteenth. But is it going to be in front of town meeting? We're going to talk about it on the thirteenth. <laughs> the plan. I think you're already the authority having jurisdiction. By the way, what? I think you already are the authority having jurisdiction over that. I think yeah. the selectmen can make that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it doesn't have to be approved to tell me. It, it does. does. It does. Whether it goes on this warrant. We see we got a, we're going to have a meeting in the fall for the merger of the two schools. That's going to be on a full town meeting. So the question is whether it's ready for prime time. There's been, you know, uh, some healthy discussion around what the parameters should be and some of the trade offs of those parameters mm -hmm. and whether or not uh, it it is best to bring it for the fall town meeting uh, is something that. Uh, we'll decide on the 13th. Ah. So one more comment at that level. For a very short time, I was in the modular home business, all right? A friend of mine, Jay McBride, we made McNade modulars. He saw one, I saw one. We found out you really couldn't make any money unless you did multiples, all right? But I learned a lot about modular homes. The company we dealt with was called Excel. Mm -hmm. They made something called the Elder Cottage. The idea of the Elder Cottage was you would buy this, this, box. You would move it in next to someone's house that you got along with, I guess, <laughs> mostly a family. Is a squatter or somebody who owns a book? <laughs> hook up to their utilities mm -hmm. and the person old like myself, I'm 75, would be able to move into that location. Having owned the house next into that I own, I could move into this, maybe have somebody live in my house to help me mm -hmm. grow old gracefully. Yeah. I have long-term health care with GE, Genworth, you know about that? Yeah. I have $400,000 worth of money saved up. So when I am getting decrepit, I will be able to live in my own space <coughs> as long as I, the money holds out. And then who knows what happens, pull the plug. But I think we have to consider something like the Elder Cottage. There was gonna be a national movement to allow this. So it was gonna be beyond zoning. If someone wanted to have this um, facility built, they were gonna be able to. The legislation never went through at the federal government level. But the elder California has approved a law allowing ADUs all over the place. See, I think we got to think about that too. Yeah, it's that here. It's called by right. Yeah, it's up to us. So it's a good idea, anyhow. And I thought yeah. for part of my career, I would be selling these elder cottages, but it never caught on. There's well, actually. There are a fair amount of companies that right now that are doing this kind of thing right. yeah. in terms of like, like, um, out, Den Outdoors and Huts NYC, there are these companies that are creating these, uh, I wouldn't call them modular homes. They don't market it that way, obviously, mm -hmm. but that's really what exactly. it is. And they have these plans and they're right. you know, fairly reasonable in terms of cost. The idea is they can be moved in and moved out. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's where I'm going. I did show you a picture of a FEMA house. I'm not wild about these, but it's, it's something that someone can live in. Say a tornado hit us, all right? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with all these people? You're going to buy these trailers till they get un out from under the mm -hmm. debt, get the insurance to pay. You know, it's it's not out of the question that we need to accommodate this type of thing. You know, I hope it doesn't happen, but we've had tornadoes before. I had one at the truck stop in West Stockbridge when I was here yeah. years ago. It's now a big solar oh, facility. God, yes. Now it's, that's exactly right. Yeah. That well, land. Tornado help with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, Third and land. Well, that's how uh, Williams, uh, the Williams town trust got started because the, right. the the trailer court you know that has the lions the, well it's no longer a trailer court it's a yeah. park but that a flood wiped all of those trailers out yeah. and that's what it in but they had williams college as a financial partner they built a fabulous um low-cost senior housing so what are the next steps that you want to think about? Our, again, I'd love to do more brainstorming. Thank you for not being negative, anybody, because it, it just, you know, puts the candle out. 
you know, and I'm a very you have, light. Nick, you have some maps there. Are those useful well, to yeah, look at? I mean, I was thinking, what if we push that table up here so that we could see that? I just, like, or just bring just make some room here. So my goal would be at some point to have someone circle an area that maybe we could look into. Mm -hmm. knows the topography, I guess you do too. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think, again, Ned would be a, a good source of the paper roads and paper sort of... Uh, yeah. We'll just put them over here. Well, we, we can walk so over and look at them uh, too. Yeah. I'm not sure what you're saying. Uh, it's great. The one that's missing though, I think is the LIDAR map that I think we really should concentrate <laughs> yeah, on doing because it would tell us a lot more than this. Mm -hmm. So you know where you are. You're off right on the middle ridge. You know? Is this the whole town, Nick? Uh, yes, it's the whole town. And these, the source of these maps is? Ned gave me these. Okay. I, I made them plastic with staples. Yeah. I'd rather have the maps that I created. There were. Mm -hmm. I thought you might have a little workshop in your basement. There was a, this, <laughs> but there are somewhere there's LIDAR overlays. That was a much, excuse me, um, uh, clear, I'm saying the wrong word, uh, mylar. Oh, right, yeah. And, and we would, and you could draw on it. Yes. Like a, yeah. Yeah. But they're gone somehow. It doesn't know where they are. And nobody else can locate them. But it goes all the way up. I think. All right. Can you give us some bearing? Is this 102? This is Main Street. That's Main Street. Where's the red line? Red line is. Oh, it's back. There's Elm. Right, so it's right here. And this is. Well, that's Pine that's, Street. Yeah, that's, that's the intersection. Right. Right. Please do. That's, that's the intersection. Right. 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 right here. There. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. That's the red line. That'll give some bearing. For a start. Okay, so that's the red line. And he wants a picture of the whole thing. Oh, you, so like you can keep these one. maps if you want, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with you keeping these maps. Okay. If that would start a mobile, discussion. But it, so there is a piece of land here. Where, where's the, where's okay, the dump? So we're going, the dump is over here. It comes around the corner. The land goes into here. Just yeah, say, here's, the, it, here's the church, north, north right. it's, church. It's off of the intersection. It's, Call me. Let's get together and talk about it. So the, the dump church. is over here somewhere. Yeah, dump is around here. Yeah. And, and, and Pine, right Pine Woods is right around there. Too. Yeah, that's just it. It's right, this other land yeah. is right across from Pine Woods, but you can see there's a lot of wet there. So yeah. I don't think that's. So is that possible. what this is? This wetland? Yes, that's what But that doesn't matter. Wait a minute. Okay. We you built in the wetlands. It. There's Pine Woods. How did, that, that, how did that happen? <laughs> Um, I think John Biacco's family owned the land or something. I'm not sure exactly. So no, but I mean, to, to build in the wetlands is it has, against the state law. Well, it may not have been. It may not have been at that point. But not as strict. Yeah. I'm not against what they did there. Mm -hmm. I think it does need some improvements. My real question is who owns it and why are we. Construct actually, owns it. Okay. And, and why is Stockbridge, me as a taxpayer, right. going to fund? The yeah. project. That's going to be a big question should, at some future very, meeting. Question: Who owns it? Because I've been trying to find out. Right. And it's an LLC, but it was. No, no, it's, it's transferred. A, just it's being just checked. Trans yeah. It's just, just being transferred. To I sort of checked with the people in the in the office, and they couldn't tell me. Well, that's because it is just yeah. being transferred. It's just being okay. to Good. Um, right. construct. But my question, as a taxpayer, is: mm -hmm. I think we're planning to do something with the building of between. One four million dollars of improvements there. Not necessarily us. Okay. What we're trying to do, I think, what we're trying to do, since we have thirty families living there, right. and they would be displaced <laughs> should, it, should it fall down. I understand. Um, yep. Is we what we're trying to do with our preservation committee money that we got, which we were allotted fifty fifty thousand dollars for an engineering study. Right. We can't do it. We can give it to Construct to do it, right. and they have to approve it. Yeah. And that's where we're starting, so that they know what they what they really need to do. But I do have a problem with us giving that money because it's a private entity, as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. and I don't know who the players are. Well, we know what Construct is. Construct no, is that. that's not the player to me. Okay, but right. who do you think is the player? Who gets the bill for the insurance? Construct. If mm -hmm. if, if insurance is collected, who gets the money? Construct. Okay, that's not the answer I could find. But maybe someone I do. I did well, try to find the answer. The LLC, probably what you found was the LLC that owned the tax credits. Had it had it until it's it has a name. I don't know what it is, but that ran out. Right. 
No, it was just, tur it was just turning ago. over when we got right. involved in this. Yeah. So now Construct is the form of Supposed to be, yes. The, the paperwork supposedly is done, and, yeah. and Construct yeah. is done. The and they're a nonprofit, right? Construct? Yeah, I think they're a 501c2. I like to see who signs the papers. If there's an insurance mm -hmm. claim, mm -hmm. who gets the money? That's where I'm coming from. Right. I think right. Pinewoods LLC. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. We'd have right. to ask. Yeah. Thank you. I couldn't find out. Well, right. probably construct probably. So you don't know. Don't right. speak right. unless you know. Please. No, we do know that the LLC expired, and that at that point, construct owned one percent, and the LLC owned ninety nine. Right. Now that flips to 100% to construct, but I suspect that construct created an, a, a, an independent LLC, independent of them, mm -hmm. to own the property. Mm -hmm. Someone has an equity position in a very valuable piece of real estate in Stockbridge. Who has the equity position? That's what we're going to find out. Thank you. Good. That's, that's enough of an answer for me. Right. Well, we I can't were, find out. We have been told by construct. And they were very explicit at the meeting. Yeah. We had invited their head to come here today, and she's out of town. Right. So we will find out soon directly. I did the we, walking through the yellow pages trying to find out, yeah. and I didn't get the name I wanted to hear. Maybe you can get a name. Well, we'll get it. Well, Thanks, Ray. If, if you got a name, I suspect it was the LLC I name. Yeah, well, that's the problem. To me, that's not a name. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, it's a limited liability corporation. Somebody owns that. Somebody's taking tax credit for that. Yeah. Someone has that actually position right. that. Someone owns a lot. Someone has responsibilities, you know? So I, I did ask the question and yeah. I still haven't got a, a name type of answer. Well, okay. that's the last change. Would you? We'll find that out. Thank Although you. we've been operating under the assumption that Construct was responsible for the maintenance. Well, she represented oh, at our meeting when she came mm -hmm. that they were taking, that the flip was right. happening. Yes. And, um, <clears throat> If it hasn't, I would think it has happened by now. They did do the road improvement in there. We talked about them. I think only half did that. Well, this part's done. done. This right. was like this huge hole that you almost couldn't drive a vehicle through. Right. It got done. I don't think it got done the right way. Just from a construction point of view, a cadam is not proper in a floodplain. Mm. Concrete would hold up. This is going to sink just like it did before. Because well, we have didn't. zero drainage. Right. So, they didn't do the they didn't do the underpinning to the road. They right. just all they did was come in and put there's, new cadam. Yeah, but there's no place for drainage, so that can't work. Well, there's also frost, not a proper there's also not a proper foundation right. under that cadam. You know, from um, an owner point of view, concrete would have been the right way to do it. All right, most of the roads in the Midwest are made of concrete. We use cadam in New England for because it moves a little bit with the frost, mm. but if there's frost underneath here and you can't drain it, then it's gonna to get torn up again. Rain, so pull. properly done, it should have been concrete. The, well, they right. were supposed to. Wayne Slazic did as good as he could do. Mm -hmm. We talked about this, a good friend of mine, yeah. But they didn't do the proper engineering before they put the macadam down. So and they had the money. Here would be the engineering. This is the term, drain to daylight. That would be the proper engineering. There's no way you can drain to daylight in this elevation. Mm -hmm. There's no way. There's nowhere for the water to go. Correct. Right. So because you can't drain to daylight, you need to not use macadam, you need to use concrete. And that will hold up. Be like an Alaskan slab. When you build a house, if you can't dig down three feet to get a, mm -hmm. a footing in, you can build a slab that has a foot on the outsides and four inches inside and it just floats. And this roadway could be done the same way as Alaskan slab is done. Very common construction technique. But whoever engineered this went the cheap route of just putting the cab down, and it failed. And it'll fail again. That whole hole is going to be right back where it was. I guarantee it. That's why this drop. property is in the state that it's in, I think. Well, that how do you, you know, that's what it is. I'm not against it being down there. Yeah. Again, if we were to dredge areas around here, we'd have similar projects that would be up on piers. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. You know, it's it's a way of constructing if you do it right. But just do it right. Do it right. Do it right. right. And, exactly. and, you know, don't do it, you know. So well, the trouble is everything gets done by the low bidder. Is that right? What's that? The trouble is everything gets done by the low bidder. Yeah. Yes. So that's what we're stuck with, you know. Mm -hmm. But if it's properly engineered, the low bidder has to do what would be proper for the topography. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. So the engineering report should have been done before that one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
they, but they you want to keep these that they only yeah. spent fifty thousand dollars. Well, I really appreciate Nick. I really appreciate you being here and a caring and b just thinking outside the box because that's what it's going to take. It is. It's, this it is a long term solution. Yeah. You know. Do you know there were two issues? If you go back in the minutes of the selectmen's meeting, go back hundred years. What are the two issues? What do we do with the smelly river? Because it was a sewer. Uh -huh. Every town would pollute the next town, mm -hmm. right? We polluted Housatonic, and Lee polluted us, and Pittsburgh polluted Lee, mm -hmm. right? That was a big problem. What was the other problem? What do we do with the poor people? Yep. Mm -hmm. Because they would go knocking on the door, say the deer thawed, and they had no food. Mm -hmm. And all winter, they were literally at starvation level. Yeah. So, we're at the same situation we were years ago. Mm -hmm. We haven't improved it. You know, I think we owe it to <clears throat> the next generation who's going to serve as the community because mm -hmm. they're not coming forward. No. I used to hire people. They walked in the door and they'd say, I need a job, Nick. And I'd say, do you fix your own car? They'd say, yes. I'd say, you're hired. Mm -hmm. Nobody comes to my door. Nobody asks me. They I'm don't know to fix their car. I used to have 14 employees. I'm down to four right now, you know? Yeah. And it's difficult because one comes from Lee, uh, one comes from Lennox, one comes from Pittsfield, and myself, you know? And I would hire more if there was capable people, but no one wants a job anymore, you know? They all got trained as uh, computer scientists or something like that. Something that they've been replaced by the smartphone. You know, and the I, I, our vocational schools kind of disappear. Exactly. My plumber That's tells it. me that he has these kids in training, and I've met some of them mm -hmm. over the years as he's come to, to fix my plumbing. And he said he can't hang on to any of them. Yep. The work's too hard. They have to get and crawl in little spaces and be well, uncomfortable. Well, it also shouldn't take seven years to become a plumber. I mean, there's also you that. Can, you can become a dentist faster than you become a plumber. Right, that's what I mean. If you you're going to go seven years, people master. say, well, why don't yeah. I just go to medical school? And worse than that, right? there's mm -hmm. no education available, like she just right. mentioned. If you want to go in, because I have an apprentice under me right now, a master, and he has to sit at a computer four to six hours at night yeah. with a gaming headset. You know what that is, the microphone? Yeah. Yeah. They have to see these there. He has to respond so that he doesn't fall asleep. What am I going to do? Sit there with a cattle prod and keep right. Zach, wake up. You know? <laughs> and he works hard all day. And then all of a sudden, he's supposed to come back and sit in my yeah. office because if I said to go home and do it, he'd definitely be doing something else. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how to get around the fact that our trades are dwindling in size. That's all guys like me keeping the business is going. Got to take you it know? to Boston. I go to uh, all the, the meetings, you know, um, PHCC is the plumbing headquarters. I stand up and make these, these requests, you know, they look at me kind of funny. How about writing an article just in the paper that hopefully gets picked up in, in a bigger, I mean, I'm serious. I it's very Bell has to do that. He likes writing articles. <laughs> I, I don't want to do that. I think I'm you're so actually very shy history. about being here. You know why? Me too. I'm still in business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And if I say something at the annual meeting, half the people don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. And it's my customer base I'm worried about. I care yeah. about my customers. Yeah. And so I try not to be too outspoken, though this has bothered me for a long time. Mm -hmm. This uh, affordable housing walkway project. Mm -hmm. And I've made a lot of suggestions. We're looking to look at that. And it just, like I said, I'm beating a dead horse. But because you have an affordable committee, which I think is great, I'd like to throw out the idea that we could probably come up with a formula, even within our zoning, to have some accessory use buildings that would allow for somebody to, to move in the area and maybe build a little equity or at least have a place mm -hmm. to stay while they mm -hmm. save money. That, and that's exactly what, what Patrick's trying to do. There we go. He's doing a great job. I know. I, know. I, know. I, I hope right we, we've got to get him reelected. Do we know who else is running? Roxanne. Roxanne. Anyhow, you're welcome Thank to keep you. your stuff if you want. What are the, what are these? The these red, red lines. Those are uh, paper roads. What roads? Waste, wastewater system. That's mm -hmm. what's also challenging. Is that where the uh, yeah. sewer? Yeah. We have this Stockbridge Ball. Yes. So show them where you are. Yeah, so we have, show them where you are on the map. So we're here. over here. Grab this. We're right here. Put an arrow where you are. Right where are we here. Um, we're up in the right road. Here. I'm right here. So we have a two-acre lot, but we have a paper road right in the middle of it. What do you call it? 
a it's paper, paper road. It's, it's not even, it's not even a path. Before there was it's, it's literally not even, you'd never know. It's not a oh, path. So it's so just land. Okay. But basically, because there exists somewhere in the records a paper road mm -hmm. there, yeah. if we were to build an ADU, we would have to go, because we're non-conforming, so we would have right. to go to the town, we would have to get all these exceptions made, even though we have two acres mm -hmm. sitting there with no actual road in the middle of it, mm -hmm. we would have to go to do all of that, even though no one, there, no one even uses... It's not even a real road. So what zoning are you in? Are you in four oh, acre zoning or two acre zoning or what? Well, we must be. It's at least two. Two. It's so at least everybody's two. not conforming up there. Right. Exactly. But it's That's amazing because the this isn't even a thing, right. but right. to even, we so have no room in space. So it's going to cost, cost you money to get, yeah. that right. doesn't make but sense. But these roads do exist under there. Yes, those right. roads, but there's in her property. It's it's just right. it's just been described. But, yeah, but you drew, drew these red lines because they're nope. paper. No, 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 no. These are your maps from Stockbridge. Ned gave me this. Well, this says wastewater system, so it could be. We're on the sewer. Line. You're on the yeah. sewer. This is what yeah. this is. So we're I on think the these sewer. are the sewer lines. Yeah. yeah. And they follow the road. That's the point. Right. So yeah. they're underneath. But there's probably other but they're roads. They're not on my road. <laughs> <laughs> you you don't want to know. We don't have it either. Right. So we live uh, right across just, from Stockbridge Falls. Just to pat myself on the back, we wouldn't have had these sewers up here had I not gone door to door to That's ask awesome. people to vote right. for the sewer. Now, see, we passed by two votes. Right two votes. <laughs> two votes. People, I'd go Where up there and say, right. would you vote for the sewer? And they'd say, right. I don't Somewhere. need that. I'm right on that my septic system's okay. fine, but my neighbor stinks. Over and over, I got that. Hi, Jim. Yeah. But we, got, we passed Sorry, it. Sorry, can't see this. Jim, can you I think say we're anything? over time. But, no. but we should have done the whole ball. All right? All these cottages yeah. in here yeah. have, let's say, a fluent going in. They could run yeah. down to here. Uh, they could. Well, for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> well this is, I want to take pictures of this. Take I want to take, well, I'm on, yeah. so I can stare at it when I'm at home. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but Ned, Ned gave me these maps. It's yeah. not for maps. You're welcome to keep them. Um, what, because maybe I can use But the point would be to them. define boundaries that would allow for some type of, I mean, another, another. Liz, do you want me to scan them? Approach we can. I have a scanner. Identify scan houses that are in tax distress. I think I do too, and I don't know how to use it. You know, uh, people have died, nobody's paying the taxes, they're just sort of sitting there. And you do have the bones of a building that you could, if you could bring those back and make them available. Exactly. Um, the foundation's sacred. It can be yeah. built on again. Yeah, yeah. Where is this? I'm just saying we have at any given time 12 or 15 buildings and there are properties in town that are uh, in distress of some kind. Or somebody died, nobody's taking it over. They're sitting mm -hmm. there. I mean, you, you know about this, right? I mean, yeah, the, you know, there are families that have it and they, it's theirs if they pay the taxes. There's nothing you yeah, can do. Yeah, but if they don't pay, we can go to try and take the building, right? That property. At some point, some point yes. Here. But it takes forever at land court. Right. And, you know, when you go to land court, it's like years and years. Another thing we put up with is ridiculous. You should have another 10 judges and get the things settled in six weeks. I mean, on a Zoom meeting, why, are you kidding? Why, why, do, why do we accept this as saying, oh, well, it goes to land court, it's dead for a year or two? Why do we accept that? Right. Mm -hmm. You're right. What is that? Right. I mean, the wheels of justice mm -hmm. turn slowly. Is that the answer? <laughs> anyway, I mean, those places, at least you have a building. Mm -hmm. That if we town might be able to take it yeah. for taxes and then do something with it. More right, creative. That's what I'd like to see you get a little more creative. Yeah. Say what fits in our zoning mm -hmm. in terms of accessory use for people that could at least rent, if not buy, that accessory use land. Mm -hmm. You know, Liz well, knows about four A's. You know, with four acres so zoning, we could have more four A's. I don't know what a four A is. Is that four acres zoning? Four acres zoning. Yeah. Um, Form A is what I meant to say. Form A is a road frontage that has enough density to put a house on it. So if the road frontage in the zone is 250 feet, and you have enough for the quarter acre in the zone, you can put a house there. Mm -hmm. And I'm always saying that's a good idea. We've gone to clustering because we didn't want to have right. every road lined right. up with and ranch houses. And we'd also right. keep open space. And, and that's the, the trade-off now. Right. If you can cluster and keep the yeah. road um, 
uh, permeable, so the rainwater collects mm -hmm. and goes the right way and things like that. There's a lot of well, considerations. Well, the planning board was talking that. about, I think it was like NHRPZ or something. Do you remember those, something reference to those before you got on the planning board? <laughs> <laughs> and it was yeah. natural and historic preservation zoning, something. Yes. The idea was if you had a 30 acre development, mm -hmm. you would try to put 10 units of housing yes. and five yes. acres yeah. in a space. Mm -hmm. And it would involve and people didn't want it. And people don't want to drive around this town and see, you know, long meadow. They don't want to see right. suburban right. situation. And and yet, if you want to build 10 houses on 40 acres and four acre houses, it's ridiculous. It's only gonna house New Yorkers who buy the land and you know, and then also, I mean we had the town also did a study on getting ready for changing of climate and they had a consultant mm -hmm. Boston consulting group and their recommendation was to cluster housing because if you have a disaster and you need to get to people and you need to get uh, energy in there um, you need to get water and stuff have everybody right there people can check on each other mm -hmm. as opposed to 10 houses on 40 acres sloshing through who knows what yeah. everybody have a driveway and ridiculous yeah. and 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 yet we can't we can't seem to be able to still, But that's, you know, that's the only, that, well, here, you know, here's the thing. It's the nature of our town is the beauty of it. And that's because it's not cluster housing. But I think there could be exceptions for affordable housing for sure. I, think so. I mean, I, I think we don't want to lose the character of this town. This, no, is, what, this it's, is what it's all about. Yeah. And we start to do these developments, then we may as well live in Long Meadow or New, mm -hmm. New Jersey or wherever, you know. Yeah. Um, so... As a planning board, we're trying very hard to keep to keep you know the, the feeling of the town, and also, I think it's more our thing is that we have to figure. Out, I'm just here as a representative of the planning board, but I think we have to figure out how to make it appealing so that we can do something a little bit of something with zoning. So but if you look now, because this was in fact a sewer, mm -hmm. Stockbridge turned its back on the river. Mm -hmm. So if you float down the river. Or you want to go with me in a canoe? Which river is it? That's Neustonic. Neustonic. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. When you're in Neustonic, you feel like you're in the backwoods of Canada mm -hmm. because there's not many houses on right. it because nobody wants to live next to the sewer. <laughs> you're laughing, but this right. is the reality. Yeah. Yeah. So I love floating down. The fishing is very good. You probably get some golf balls when you get over to the golf course. <laughs> that's my, I'm part of the stream team. That's my section. <laughs> we don't <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> Secret golf ball that's it. recovery unit. Is, is this the... Uh, is this the golf course? Let's go back to here's Main Street. Yeah. Um, you come down Main Street Wait, to the church, um, Church Street. Here's the, right. here's, here's, this is all golf course. Right back in here. Is it the golf course? Is it swamp? Well, we're, no, that's the other it's side of it. It's just white part. That term is floodplain. All right. This, this, why, this white part is the this, golf course. You had the best grass of any <laughs> It's well, water green. Yes. It's, a, it's a wonderful place. It's, oh, it's being watered right it now. It's water. There's water all over the golf course. No, but is this, is this new one? I mean, it looks like these are the, the fairways in among the swamp. Is that well, right? It's not swamp. It's, no, it's just, it's just, right. Yeah, this is Patty Gale's house. It's here. Oh, right. This is Jerry. Yeah. Here's, here's the congregational church, right? Right. Like here. Mm -hmm. And the golf course. Right. You go the down golf, here and the golf course is There's just that one. There's just one. Here, yeah, and the eleventh hole is off of Cherry Street. Right. And there's some on the other side yep. of you Glendale. Have to go over the Actually, there's right nothing here. on the, this side of the railroad track is no golf course. Golf course is on this side of the railroad track. Okay. Um yeah. I think oh, in the eleventh hole, you're right. Look, look, the green's near the track, but it's not. These are supposedly wetlands, right? Yes. Well, they're, they're certainly what's the, what's the either floodplain or see? Yeah, wetlands. Yep. Mm -hmm. Look how much of the town is wetland. Well, we're well protected by wetlands. Mm -hmm. But, you know, back to my discussion, we're going to dredge this, <laughs> right. all right, which is going to be allowed. Why wouldn't we do something on Clark Pond Road? Right. Where is what? Clark Pond? You, you've okay. talked about that several times. So Route 7 is where? Route 7. This is Red Line End. So let's go down here. Go. This is Ice Glen. Right. So this is sort of Clark Pond area. Well, yeah, this is Clark, Clark Road. Yeah, this Clark. is Clark Pond. Okay. Right. Oh, so it's a wetland it's, down. It's, it's not a pond. When you're going, well, when you, if you look at <laughs> it, it says Clark Pond to me. <laughs> right. It doesn't say Clark, Clark Road. It says Clark Road. Right. 
Yeah. No, but it's, it's just yeah. going by this map. Right. right. Exactly. But you know. I'm, so this is this. It was a pond that's been overtaken. They still skate. Uh, you can still well, skate on it. Yeah. Oh, yes. but it's There's, it's it's full. Is, full is it male full? You see your big landowner. There's. Um, <clears throat> what, was that, what, what was he? What was Patrick talking about? The fragmite, calcium fragmite. Um, so limestone is very good for certain things. Um, for instance, do you know um, what a wild leak is? Do you know what ramps are? I know what ramps are in, in terms of, of All right, plants. So very soon, if you have an east-facing slope yes, and the trees haven't grown the leaves yet, the sun comes in very low and ramps jump out. Oh, yeah. All right. We have a lot of I've got delicious. Yes, I know people to harvest people come. Right people come. Right there. There. We have a, 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 a shadow. Um, oh, actually, it's we look right. right. Yeah, it's uh, right there. But the rest of your land is sort of. It goes back, back to you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Maybe that's it right there. Oh, dear. Yeah. Good. I know it's But you're. But you're not going right. I don't think you're slow. Well, unless you're going up behind you. All right. This is interlinked. Okay. This is our house. Mm -hmm. This is the shadow book. Uh, Randy. Right yes. Um, we, I'm sorry. This is Jan. Uh, yeah. I really would love to see those maps. And so if uh, if one of Please you come here. Here's okay. one of you I'm could. Them to you. I just scanned them and emailed them to all of us. So you should have it in your email now. In your email. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I and know you're I, need, I need to uh, go because, as you know, I'm out in Colorado and I have an appointment here. In just a minute or two. So I will leave you now and I'll be in touch about the other meeting. And thank you very much. Can we uh, move to adjourn? Yes. I'll move to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Okay. Second. All right. Okay. We have All in favor? Aye. 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 And, and Aye. Thank, Aye. thank you very much for coming and talking with us today. It was very informative and I really thank enjoyed it. Thank you for listening. Yeah. That's great. And Jen, we'll think of you and be, uh, you'll be in our prayers for the next two days. Okay. Two thank days. you. Bye, Jen. Four. Four days. Patrick gave me that as that. All right.